news tonight. Mix and match. The EU gives the green light for fighting Omicron with different vaccines. Possible cure. The fight to take down Omicron speeds up with the manufacture of new drugs. Diplomatic face-off. The US and Russia on heated grounds as discussions continue on possible warfare. Christmas cheer. Record-breaking displays of magical Christmas trees leave Germans in awe. From the global resources of the Verena Media Network, this is Other Verena World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. Very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We start off with some breaking news. Social Democrat Olaf Scholz managed to inspire German voters in this year's election with a champ campaign that played on his reputation as a safe pair of hands as the parliament elected him as chancellor to replace Angela Merkel after a historic 16-year tenure. Germany's new traffic-like coalition promises to dare more progress. Social Democrat Olaf Scholz will have to balance the agendas of the progressive Greens and the pro-market Free Democrats. But his first challenge will be tackling the country's aggressive fourth COVID wave. Schultz is in favor of mandatory vaccination and wants lawmakers to vote on the issue before the end of the year. His first trip abroad will be to France, which is set to take over the EU's rotating presidency in January. Scholz has said he wants to shore up Germany's cooperation with NATO and the transatlantic alliance. Analysts say he's likely to talk tougher on Russia and China than his predecessor, but his actions won't be dramatically different. While domestically, tackling climate change will be high on the agenda. Schultz is fiscally conservative and plans to return to a no-new debt policy by 2023. Taking over from Angela Merkel, he has large shoes to fill, but his predecessor says she will sleep soundly, knowing he is her replacement. Now on to the rise in COVID infections. Due to the spread of Omicron, Europe is once again tightening virus restrictions. Only the vaccinated can visit restaurants and bars in Germany and France requires those aged 65 or up to show proof of a booster shot. With the rapid spread of Omicron across the globe, Europe is facing yet another round of lockdowns and virus restrictions. According to the New York Times on Tuesday, among the 52 countries that have reported Omicron infections, 23 are European nations, including Russia. In fact, the UK has confirmed 246 Omicron cases as of Sunday, Denmark reporting a total of 261. To tame the spread of the new variant, Germany will now exclude unvaccinated people from going to bars and restaurants. And those who recently recovered from COVID-19 must show a documentation of recovery. Over in France, starting next Wednesday, those who are 65 or above will have to provide booster jab proof to extend the validity of their health pass, which enables them to board flights and gain entry to restaurants and museums. Though much of Europe is following the path of France, not everyone is happy with tighter virus curves, particularly in Austria, where over 40,000 people took to the streets of its capital to demand freedom. Austria will make vaccinations mandatory for all from next February. In the meantime, the situation in the United States is not any better, with a rising number of cases among children. Data released by the American Academy of Pediatrics shows that as of last Thursday, one out of five new patients from the last week were children. In fact, nearly two million children have been infected since early September. Experts note that it is less likely for children to become severely ill compared to adults, but the U.S. has reported 974 child COVID deaths since the start of the pandemic. While the world struggles to keep the COVID-19 infections under control in Europe, children aged between 5 and 14 are seeing the most infections yet again. Meanwhile, health agencies in Europe are promoting the use of mixing different types of booster shots. The World Health Organization says that children between 5 and 14 years old have the highest rate of COVID-19 infections in Europe at the moment. According to Hans Kluge, the WHO's European director on Tuesday, COVID-19 was two to three times higher among young children than the average population in some places. 
This brings me to my triple call today. Number one, to shift from a reactive mode to stabilizing the crisis. Two, to protect children and their schools as part of the response strategy. And three, not to mandate without reaching out to the communities first. Meanwhile, the European Medicines Agency and European Centers for Disease Prevention and Control recommended mix and match booster shots three to six months after primary vaccination. The ECDC on its website on Tuesday said the two agencies have reviewed the available evidence and provided technical recommendations and advice on heterologous vaccination against COVID-19 either in the primary course or as a booster. It added that it showed better results when mixing virus vector vaccines such as ones made by AstraZeneca or Janssen with mRNA vaccines such as Pfizer's or Moderna's. Mixing two types of mRNA vaccines had not been well studied enough to know the safety and efficacy levels, but it has been studied enough to indicate that such an approach could be used when flexibility or acceleration in the vaccination campaigns is needed under the shortage of supplies. We have some good news for you. British-based drug maker GlaxoSmithKline may have the answer to the recent surges of the Omicron variant throughout the world as new studies show it is highly effective against all versions of the new strain. GlaxoSmithKline's COVID-19 therapy works against all mutations of the new Omicron variant. That's according to the UK firm on Tuesday when it cited data from early stage studies. The British drug maker has developed the antibody-based drug Sotrovimab with US partner Veer Biotechnology. Tuesday's announcement comes a week after GSK said preclinical data also showed the drug had worked against Omicron. Sotrovimab is designed to stick to the spike protein on the surface of the virus. Omicron has been found to have an unusually high number of mutations on that protein. But GSK said its data showed the new treatment was effective against all 37 mutations identified to date. Company Chief Scientific Officer Hal Barron said the therapy is also effective against all other variants of concern. The share of household wealth owned by billionaires has risen by a record amount during the pandemic. With millionaires also coming out of COVID-19 ahead, the World Inequality Report produced by a network of social scientists estimated that billionaires this year collectively own 3.5% of global household wealth, up from slightly above 2% at the start of the pandemic in early 2020. 2020 marked the steepest increase on record in global billionaires' share of wealth. This, according to this year's World Inequality Report, which found that billionaires now own 3.5 percent of global household wealth. The coronavirus pandemic deepening divisions, but the trend is nothing new. As the report points out, income and wealth inequalities have been on the rise nearly everywhere since the 1980s. The poorest half of the world's population owns just 2 percent of global wealth. The richest 10 percent possesses nearly three quarters of it, while the top 1 percent possesses 38 percent of global wealth. In terms of income, the region found to be most unequal was the Middle East and North Africa, where the top 10 percent captures 58 percent of national income. Europe ranks as the most balanced, with top earners claiming 36 percent of income. Earning disparities are also high between genders. Although women account for half of the world's population, they only take home 35 percent of global income. Overall, global inequalities are as great today as they were at the peak of Western imperialism in the early 20th century, according to the report. But its authors think these gaps could be closed through political action and a modest progressive tax on global multimillionaires. It's going to a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back. The Indian Air Force said a military chopper carrying Chief of Defense Staff Bipin Rawat and 13 others crashed shortly after takeoff today in Tamil Nadu. With deep regret, it has now been ascertained that General Bipin Rawat, Mrs. Mudalika Rawat and 11 other persons on board have died in an unfortunate accident. 
General Rawat had taken a flight from Delhi to Sulur and that flight manifest had listed nine people. The flight from Sulur included five more possibly crew. The crash took place shortly after the chopper took off from the Air Force base. The defense establishment learned from the incident from villagers who had informed the district administration. Visual showed wreckage scattered on a steep hillside and rescuers at work struggling through thick smoke and fire. Charred bodies were pulled out by locals and cops from under mangled metal and fallen trees. U.S. President Joe Biden warned Russian President Vladimir Putin the West would impose strong economic and other measures on Russia if it invades Ukraine, while Putin demanded guarantees that NATO would not expand further eastward. There you go. Hello. U.S. President Joe Biden held a much-anticipated two-hour video call with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday, warning him that his country would face strong economic sanctions and other measures if Russia invades Ukraine. Things we did not do in 2014, we are prepared to do now. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan told reporters after the video call that potential economic sanctions would exceed the measures imposed on Russia after it annexed Crimea from Ukraine in 2014, but added that he did not believe an invasion was imminent. We still do not believe that President Putin has made a decision. What President Biden did today was lay out very clearly the consequences if he chooses to move. And ultimately, we will see in the days ahead through actions, not through words, uh, what course of action Russia chooses to take. The virtual meeting, which Sullivan said was mainly about Ukraine, comes at the lowest point for U.S.-Russian relations since the end of the Cold War. Economic sanctions, which one U.S. official said could target Russia's biggest banks and Moscow's ability to convert rubles into dollars and other currencies, are designed to dissuade Putin from using tens of thousands of troops gathered near the Ukrainian border to attack its southern neighbor. The Kremlin, which said before Tuesday's video call that it did not expect any breakthroughs, has denied harboring any intention to attack Ukraine and has said its troop posture is defensive. Putin told Biden he wanted legally binding guarantees against what the Kremlin calls creeping NATO expansion and complained about NATO attempts to, quote, develop Ukrainian territory. The virtual meeting ended with an agreement to continue talks and meet in person at some point, and both sides directed their teams to follow up on issues related to Ukraine. A days-long rain event known as Kona Lo, notorious for its slow-moving nature, has dumped nearly two feet of rain on Maui in less than two days and up to three inches an hour in parts of Oahu. Heart-stopping rescues in Hawaii as sheets of rain drench the archipelago. Five boys, 10 and under, miraculously pulled from a raging river under the cover of darkness. The days-long rain event known as a Kona Low, notorious for its slow-moving nature, dumping nearly two feet on Maui in less than two days and up to three inches an hour in parts of Oahu. Stay vigilant, pay attention to your surroundings, and really don't take any chances at this time. Chaos on roadways, now more like rivers. Tourists here for a taste of paradise, seen wading through the heart of Waikiki. Oh, man. The honeymoon hotspot now a tangled mess. Winds toppling trees and knocking out power to thousands. Whoa. The tree literally fell right before we stopped. Yes. You know, it's a great thing nobody got hurt. The threat of landslides top of mind after debris barreled down Kauai slopes earlier this year. Tonight, a state of emergency as hundreds flock to Oahu to commemorate the 80th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. Ceremonies pressing on before a backdrop of gray skies and flood watches. According to Belgium's agency that deals with handling applicants of asylum seekers, authorities in the country are struggling to cope with the number of asylum seekers and the displaced themselves are racing against time as winter sets in. Every morning, hundreds of asylum seekers are queuing in Brussels to try to complete their requests and find a place to stay. The reception network is totally saturated and the situation is getting dramatic. So many are spending several nights in the cold, surrounded by dirt and rats. The doors open at 8.45 a.m. First to enter are the most vulnerable, isolated minors and families with children. Single men are then given a chance, one after the other, but most of the time they end up leaving without an answer, which can sometimes cause tension. 
Not pushing. But there's also welcome relief. We have been present here every morning for several weeks to provide coffee, tea and survival blankets. Also to take care of people who are potentially hypothermic. And finally, to distribute some equipment and inform them as well as possible. The situation has worsened in recent weeks. There's been an increase in arrivals and there is a shortage of places also due to the floods in Belgium last summer. The government agency that deals with asylum seekers says it's in a race against time. It's a terrible situation that goes beyond Belgium with many European countries suffering from similar situations and the EU is still divided over how to face it down. This Thursday, interior ministers will gather to discuss the problem but a solution is far off. On the first day of the Seoul UN Peacekeeping Ministerial Conference, President Moon Jae-in called for international support for his proposal to declare a formal end to the Korean War, saying it will lead to lasting peace and the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. South Korean President Moon Jae-in has called on the international community to support Seoul's efforts to declare a formal end to the Korean War. In a congratulatory speech at the 2021 Seoul UN Peacekeeping Ministerial Conference on Tuesday, Moon stressed that the end of war declaration was the first step to peace on the Korean Peninsula. Moon also said that the country would do more for UN peacekeeping operations around the world to help war-torn nations build lasting peace. He vowed to dispatch more medical personnel to the nation's peacekeeping units, as well as provide more equipment to UN peacekeeping operations around the globe. South Korea's Defense Minister Seo Wook further elaborated on the country's pledges to contribute to UN peacekeeping missions. This includes a plan to offer 16 500 MD helicopters for operations in Africa, as well as a plan to provide an additional 1 million US dollars to the Peacekeeping Trust Fund, which will be partially used to facilitate a UN smart camp. The 2021 Seoul UN Peacekeeping Ministerial Meeting is being held virtually for two days from December 7 to the 8th. The forum brings together foreign and defense ministers from 155 countries as well as other senior officials and related international organizations. This evening, on the second day of the meeting, former UN Secretary General Pang Gi moon is scheduled to give a special speech before the closing ceremony. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. French police arrested a suspected member of the hit quad that killed Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi as the man was about to board a flight from Paris to Riyadh. A major outage disrupted Amazon cloud services temporarily, knocking out streaming platforms, Netflix and Disney+, Plus, trading app Robinhood and a wide range of apps. After being in place for more than 50 years, a ban on private companies in Cuba was lifted in August, enabling many to pursue long-held business projects. Australia will join the United States in a diplomatic boycott of the Winter Olympic Games in Beijing. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said a decision that risks soaring already bitter bilateral relations. Chip giant Intel Corp plans to take self-driving car unit Mobili public in the United States in mid-2022, a deal which would value the Israeli unit at more than $50 billion. The Ethiopian government says its forces had recaptured the strategic towns of Desi and Kombolcha. Their latest territories gain in the battle against fighters from the northern Tigray region. A Kenyan police officer has shot dead at least five people in an overnight rampage throughout the capital, Nairobi, before he shot and killed himself, according to the authorities. And finally tonight. It's Christmas time and the Yuletide season is alive and well at the German family's home in Germany state of Lower Saxony. While most Germans head up the ladder to get down the dusty Christmas decoration boxes from the attic, Thomas and Suzanne Germain have more to handle than most. The couple are no less than the German world record holders and for this year's 10th anniversary have ramped things up and set up a total of 444 trees decorated head to toe with bubbles and tinsels and lights. 
No two trees are the same with a huge variety of festive colors and themes, stormtroopers, superheroes, smiley faces, fruits and much more. More than 10,000 Christmas balls and 300 strings of fairy lights are used in the display. The couple, who lovingly decorate each tree by hand, start putting up the trees months before Christmas in order to have it up by the first Advent Sunday. The Christmas trees are omnipresent in the flat. Even the bedroom is overflowing with them. But the German family definitely wants to continue with their Christmas tree passion. And so far, they face no threat to their world dominance. In case you have missed any of the stories we add tonight, you can rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Until then, stay safe and have a good night.